Hello. I'm not sure if anybody's going to join me today. I'm Adasha D. I don't normally have the camera on me, <laughs> but I thought I'd say hi. Um, so it's a little while since I've been here to uh, uh, craft and live. So um, I think this is the first time this year. So if you're there, pop in and say hello. It always makes me feel a bit better. Um, so today I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how we create this. Obviously, we can't do all of it in an hour because it's a lot of colouring and it takes a lot of time. So what I'm going to concentrate on, if I just turn it around, is I'm going to show you how to create the butterfly. Um, we're going to use rice paper and we're going to um, edge all of the artwork with it. I'm going to show you how to create the heart and how to give yourself a little bit of peace in your heart because that's what my artwork is about. Um, taking time out, mindfulness and self-care is behind all my artwork. So um, I do have this as a download if anybody wants to do it later on. So you're going to get this. Um, it's um, shows you the copyright but it's, there's some words here that you can cut out you will also get um, an A5 and an A6 in a black outline so you've got three chances there to create and if you prefer the, the faint outline you can hardly see it on here but I always use it when I'm doing my things to help people get more of a natural sort of look with their art rather than having a black outline so it's available on my website if you do want to do this later on alongside me. Um, if you're a subscriber to my um, website, you get it for free. So, right, I'm going to turn it around and we're going to get started. So. Right, hopefully, hopefully the light's okay. Hopefully you can see okay. I'm just going to get comfy and I'm just going to take the charge out of my phone there so it doesn't keep banging. Okay. Right, so I'm going to use the little A6 um, outline, um, out, outline. So I'm just going to move her away and it's very faint, this line, but it helps you just create artwork that just doesn't look like it's a stamp. And um, I mean, if you want to do the face and things with me, I'm going to do another one and put it on YouTube so you can colour in the face. But we'll concentrate on the butterfly and the heart today. So the first thing I would suggest doing is if you just find the centre of your little square and then you can create your heart. Um, if you put a couple of little marks at either side. So I've got some rice paper um, by Stamperia. Um, and normally I would use, use Modge Podge with um, um, rice paper, but because this that I've used to print off is just normal card, I'm just going to use my print stick. Um, but if you do have like a, a card that's mixed media type, then I would suggest using it. And I'm just going to use um, my print stick to just get a couple of pieces in. So I'm just going to, on the bottom, at the back, of this page just put down a little bit of sticky and then I'm just going to stick a little bit of rice paper just on the back because what I like what I like is um, the fact that it still moves I don't want it to be static so we'll just put a little bit there and then I'm going to put another little bit at this corner. So I like um, when, the, when it looks like writing on the rice paper. And I like when, when we get going, we start to blend all this in with our pencils. I don't know if anybody's there that does like using their pencils. Um, you might not think you can use them with mixed media, but um, I'm predominantly a pencil sort of artist but I use my mixed media as well so I'm just going to stick another little bit underneath there and then I'm just going to work my way 
down. There'll be some bits that where I don't put the rice paper. I'm just going to put another little bit, I think, there. And then I'm going to leave a little bit of a space. And then I'll put another little bit here. I do like rice paper. So I'm going to use another little bit here. So this is just, I just go around the rice paper and I just find the little bits that I like and I just tear them up. I like it when they've not got any straight edges and you can actually see the tear. And I'm just going to put another little bit here. So they're all going on underneath at the back. Whoops. I just haven't put enough sticky on here. So if there's anybody there that um, usually comes along on my classes or my Facebook lives, then just say hello. I haven't had a look to see if I can see anybody um, saying anything to me today. But if you do say something to me and I don't respond, I will respond after. So I'm just putting another little bit of glue at the corner here. And sticking it on there, sorry. Sorry, it's a bit um it's a bit of footery at the minute, and that's a Scottish word, footery. <laughs> you probably don't know what that is, but footery means that it's quite quite intricate. <laughs> so I'm just putting a little bit here. So at the minute, it kind of looks like that. So, so then what I would do is get a black piece of card and cut it out so that it would be matte and layered. And then I would stick that on there. So you're then getting elements of the black and then elements of the rice paper and the rice paper is free to move. And then I start putting some rice paper now along the top so so that we can start to blend in. So I'm just going to put a little bit down this corner along here. And then find some rice paper. So I've just got little bits that are torn, you know. Um, I'm going to use this bit because it looks more like a border. So I like to put them over the top and at the corner. And obviously I need to put a little bit more glue down here. And the good thing as well, if you're just using just the pret stick, is you've got a little bit more control. And then squeeze that down, press it down hard. And once this is all dry, your glue is not sticky, you can go over these with your pencils and add a little bit of color as well. So I'm gonna do another little bit along here. Usually when I do my lives, I'm just colouring, just showing you how to colour the faces and things. So I thought I would do something a little bit different today. So now this goes over the top and so it's starting to blend into the one that's underneath. That's still free to move. I'm just going to tear this little bit so that we can still see her arm. I don't want her arm to be hid. And then I'll find another little little bit that's like a, a border so like with the one that I'm using from Stamperia they've got lot they've got lots that have got just little areas that just look like little borders and I like using them so I'll just stick that down there I might just put a little bit on there on the back is there anybody there to say hi to <laughs> is there anybody that I know I have um, some ladies that come along to my, my own ones on my own page and that it's always nice to know that there's somebody there. I'm just going to find another little piece of paper. I'm going to use this one here and put it up here, I think. I don't have any rules or anything with paper. I just go by what I like and what looks right. But I just quite like it when there's some at the back and you can blend it in from being on the page. 
So I'll probably come back and put more in. I want to show you how to do the butterfly and blend the rice paper into the butterfly and then we're going to do the heart, show you how you can give, give her some peace or love or self-compassion or whatever it is that you want to put into your heart. So I'm going to start with my pencils now. And I'm going to start colouring a little bit of the butterfly. So I'm using some blues. So I'm using like a light cobalt turquoise and then I'm going to use a light pathalo blue. And I'm not going to colour all of this area because I'm going to use rice paper for that. But I'm just going to start with little light circular motions. Just start to put down a little base colour just going around that line. A little bit around this bit. And then the same over at this side. Just put a little bit in. And then here as well, I'm going to colour all of in here with the blue. And up here as well. Hopefully you can see the butterfly. I know when it's the faint line, it's quite hard to see. But it looks better at the end without the black harsh line around it. And then I'm going to use the Pithalo blue and go around just the outside. And I just do it like circular motions just to help me get lots of layers on top of each other. Right now I'm going to bring in some rice paper. So I'm going to use... I've got a couple of bits, sorry I'm knocking the camera there. Um, I've got a couple of bits of rice paper that I've decided that I would like. So whatever you like for in your wings, you know, um, just have a look around if you do have any rice paper. And what I'm going to do is just try and create the shape that's in there just by tearing it. So I'm just going to tear it and it's then going to be a bit like a triangle. And it doesn't matter if it's not perfect. So I'm going to do that, get my little bit of glue and just put it in there and then just try and shape it and then I want it to come out and onto the rice paper that's already there so stick that down and then do the same on the bottom wing so just Play around with your paper, see if you can find a bit that looks like you can shape it in there a little bit. So like that. And then I'm just going to tear. And put a little bit in there as well. I just need to add a little bit more on this bit just so that it's coming over onto the, the rest of the rice paper. Like so I'm just going to pull that little bit there that's coming over onto the body I'll go around that with a bit of scissors later maybe right I'm just going to start colouring in a bit of the body um, I've just realised that I never got on top of black So I'm going to do a little bit of blue on the body first. So go in and I'm going to leave a little bit of white coming all the way down there so that it can make it look like it's got a bit of a shine eventually. So starting off with the blue, then going a little bit darker. And you can keep going up all the different shades of blue and just have have lots of blue in under there and then go over the top of it with the black at the end. and. To be honest, the more layers that you can put down with pencils, the more vibrant it will look and it just looks better. But because I don't have a lot of time, I'm trying to do it quite quickly. So I'm keeping it quite light. I'm not pressing down hard, going over here with the black. Oh, paper sticking to me. And then after lots of layers, I then start to go down a little bit harder. And then look how small my little black pencil is. 
I'm going to do some little lines, so little curls that's going to come around like so. And if you've got like a fine liner, a black fine liner, then that's quite good if you want to then go over the top of his little antenna eyes that are there. And then again, you can go over those lines we've just done with a fine liner at the end. I'm just going to go back over again now with some blue. And so blending the blue into the black and it just helps give it a little bit more of a, um, a shine and it just adds more interest. It just makes it that it's not just a, a matte black. And then because we've got this little bit of white here, it starts to make it look like there's a bit of a shine. I'm just going to use now a bluish turquoise and go over it and I'm starting to press a little bit harder. So as you press it down, if you're not familiar with pencils, then when you press hard, you start to burnish it. And that just means that you're pressing all the colours together. And so it's really good to have lots of different layers under there because then you're burnishing them all together. And I'm just going to make it a little bit darker in here on this wing. I'm going to put a shadow in there as well. And just add some more blue in here. And in here. It's um it's quite a it's quite a large, well quite a long project when you're starting from beginning to finish with with a colour and thing, but it's quite nice when you can mix it up and add a little bit of mixed media in there as well. But I like pencils because they just take me out of the zone for a little while. And it's quite nice just to not be thinking about anything. So then I'm just going to press really hard now with my black, coming down the side of the butterfly. And then softly, I'm going to create a bit of a shadow in here just by light circular motions, creating a little bit of darkness in on this wing. Because if you imagine, there'll be a sh shadow coming in off her head. And just to let you see where the body is. A little bit dark. And because there's a little bit of red in the rice paper, I'm going to bring in a little bit of red into the rest of the um, wing, just maybe by adding a few red dots, perhaps, because they are dots. Perhaps if you had flowers, you could do some flowers. But it's just quite nice just to add a little bit of what's already going on over here. So you can keep building that up and building that up and then adding more black in on the top of that blue. And then just defining that line. Right, so I'm going to as well come around and just add a little bit of a black line, just faint around some of the wing. I'm just going to go around that little bit of rice paper, just with light circular motions, just to define that a little bit. And I'm going to do some little lines coming in here and eventually I'll go around and really darken up that with a fine liner I'll come up here as well and darken this up and then I'm just going to now go around here with the blue and start to find and bring some of that blue in onto the rice paper as well, just to make it look a bit more cohesive. I'm just going to bring in my black again, so I'm just going to define this little line a little bit because that's part of the rest of the wing. Has anybody said anything? Oh, Sarah, sorry, let me just have a look. 
I guess that it's quite a dry glue. Usually I drown everything in matte medium. Yeah, this is a dry glue. So when it's just a, a paper, um, when it's just like a, a paper that you would draw on, it's not going to like saturate it. You kind of need a heavy duty paper if you're using like Mod Podge or, you know, things that can hold paint. So like a mixed media type paper or a, a hard pressed type of paper. And so I, I quite like just using the print stick. It works for, for the way that I use it. Has anybody else asked me anything? Louise, are you going to watch later? That's fine, Louise. Thank you for stopping by. I, I get I get engrossed in this and then I forget to look to see if anybody's talking to me. Right, so that's us. We've got a little bit of the butterfly done. It just needs a little bit more black and things going on there. What time have we got? 20 plus. I'm going to now do the heart. And then after the heart, I'm going to add a little bit of the background and try to bring in a little bit more rice paper on top of things. So we'll see how much we can get done. So just with a normal pencil, I've measured it earlier just to find where the, mid the middle of this box was. And then I'm just going to roughly draw a heart and you can put whatever you like in your heart love hope peace self-care self-compassion So we've got a little bit of a heart. I might just bring it down a little bit. About there. And it's maybe not perfect, but it's alive. <laughs> right, so I'm going to work up the colours with different reds and oranges and pinks. So I'm going to start with a uh, a beige red which is usually one of the skin tones that I use and get the very first layer down now you don't see anything with the very first layer but it's good to get that base layer down because um, and when it's light um, you can then add layers on top of it when it's light you can rub out as well you won't see any mistakes and it helps you just get an idea of um, where you want your shades to go and the or the other pencils sit better on top if you were to go straight down with the red onto like the white paper um it's very harsh and there's no forgiving with it you if you make a mistake then that's it you know it's hard to get rid of it but if you have this base layer down it just helps to build them all up so there I've gone over, it was pretty much all there, but I've left a little bit there that's just white because I always like to have a little bit of white to um, add a little bit of shine on things. So that's our first layer. And then I'm moving up to a coral. And um, if you start on the outside first and then start to build your way in, you can start to get the illusion of if it being round. So. If you just start here and then just little circular motions work your way in and then back out and then back in that's how i do it and if you find little areas that you want to keep a little bit lighter so you might want a little bit coming down here that's a little bit lighter just to make it look like it's a little bit of a shine So like I said, if anybody does want to do this later on, because um, I know that these will stay up on the page for a while, then you can download, download the images and do them at home. You're going to get two A6s plus an A5 plus some words. And you know, once you've downloaded it at home, you can print it off as often as you like. So there, we're starting to see where that little white area is. Just getting a few 
more layers in there. So I've got a little white bit here and a little white bit there. And then I'm going to go up to another darker colour. I'm going to go for pink and it's rose, rose carmine. I'm just doing the same. So I like to keep it at its darkest at the bottom. So I'll just keep making it darker. And then keeping it at its darkest as well, going around the outside to make it look like it's round. And just getting a little bit light as you come in. So if you keep your pencil really light, you've got more control. So I just need to move my hand. Hopefully you can see okay. Is everybody okay? So if you keep it a little bit darker here in the middle as well, then it starts to look like it's a bit round in there so you can add your greys and things. Or well, there's lots of different ways of doing your hearts. I'm always drawn colour, drawn and colouring hearts. A large part of what I, I'm always doing. And eyes. Predominantly eyes. And I'm sorry I'm not doing any eyes today. Um I've done a few. I did a big eye one before Christmas where I showed you how to do lots of different eyes and I think it's still in the group. And I've I've done eyes before, so I thought you might be bored of me doing eyes. But if you do enjoy doing the eyes, then let me know and I'll I'll add them in. I'm doing another one in March. I've been asked to do another one in March. I can't remember which date it was now. And then just going up again to another. I'm going to bring in some orange. And light, light cadmium orange. These are um, Faber-Castell polychromos that I'm using. Just in case you're wondering, I hadn't mentioned what I was using. So I quite like it as well when you start to do little lines and little cracks and things in the heart. But on this occasion, I'm just going to do it quite, quite normal and average. And I am rushing it, so usually I would take a lot longer and, and lay down the layers and take my time with it. But I'm trying to get as much of this in as I can in the hour. So I'm bringing in mostly orange over here and then that just starts to add, like what we did with the butterfly, it just makes it that it's not all just one matte colour. And orange is a really good one to add a bit more vibrancy and to brighten things up. And same with your yellows, if you bring them in on the top. So if you do the little circular motions, then you cover more of the paper, the the tooth of the paper holds on to it and then you can have again more control so i'm bringing a little bit of the orange in here i've left a little bit of a white bit down down this side as well and then i'm now going to do a red so we've slowly gone up the colors getting darker and darker and um once you've got a few layers in there and you're happy with the colours that you've got in there, then you can press down to burnish it. And I don't burnish all of it because then it helps you give shine if you just burnish areas of it. It just gives the illusion of it being shiny in areas. So I'm going to burnish it a little bit down here as well. And maybe do another little bit over here. Slowly, slowly starting to look a little bit like a heart, isn't it? <laughs> it does take time, doesn't it? Is there anybody out there that uses pencils a lot? Or are you more card makers or mixed media? Or just interested in all of it? quite nice to know 
Carol, I tend to be a bit heavy handed with pencil crayons. I need to practice more to get a lighter touch. I usually, I'd press to see more, usually watercolor rather than pencil color so I don't get, you don't get much practice. Uh, I do understand the whole heavy handed part of it, Carl. It's very tempting just to press down hard. Um, and I can be a bit like that as well because I get impatient and I want it to look a certain way quickly. But um, it's just practice. If you sit with a pencil and then just practice different, um, pressing with different pressure, you'll start to see how you can get different colours and tones as well when you're doing it. It's just practice, really. But some some people, you know, there's there's still room for people who are heavy-handed with pencils to, you know, it's finding your own style and just enjoying what you're doing rather than putting pressure on yourself for it to look a certain way, you know. Right, so that's another little bit. And I'm going to go for an even darker red now, which is called dark red, funny enough. And then just bring in little areas. Again, down the bottom. Right, so I would continue to colour that loads and loads, but I'm not going to get stuck in doing that all, all for the whole hour with you. Because we've been using rice paper and because I've put a little bit of um, rice paper in the wings, I want to put a little bit in the heart as well. So this was the paper I used in the heart, in the, sorry, the wings. So I'm just going to bring a tiny little bit down, just tear it, tear it so it's just minute, it's just really, really tiny. And I'm going to set it on top of the glue rather than put the glue on the heart so that, because if you get the glue on the paper, it's hard to get your pencils to move over that. So I'm just going to put... A little bit of rice paper in there and I have the word peace I could probably do with cutting it down a little bit let me just grab my scissors make it a little bit smaller so we all need a little bit of peace in our hearts don't we and this is why I liked, this is why I created this one. I, all of the artwork I created comes from a place for myself where I've perhaps on an occasion felt like I needed a bit of peace in my heart or I needed some self-care or self-compassion. Um, that's where, where it all comes from for me. So I'm just going to, with my yellow, this is a, a cream, with my piece, I'm just going to go over the top just so that it's not just all plain white and put a little bit of that down and then I'm going to go over that as well with like a terracotta. I'm going to move off my artwork onto this little bit of black here and then just going around the edge. So if you set your pencil along the edge, you can edge it and then if you just softly drag a little bit in, you can get a little bit every now and again. Oops. This is footery. <laughs> My word footery is appropriate now. And then just, just turn it around, just edge it again up here. Now you can go in and add a little bit more colour and if you want to go over it with a white to burnish it or add in a little bit of the red off the heart, you could do that. But I'm going to stick it on top of my Pritt stick. And then put that in on top of that piece of rice paper. And if you just do a little bit at the edge, you can have it that it's still hanging if you want, or you could put it in. And I've got these, I don't know where where I got them from. They're little, they're little um, gems. I might have got them out of Hobby Craft or somewhere. But they've got little roses in them, and I just thought they were really cute. So I'm just going to use one of those. And I'm going to stick it just to make it look like it's holding on to my word piece a little bit there. Right, so 
I should actually have done this before I did that. Just this area here, colour it in so that it's a solid black. Now it just takes a wee while to layer it up and get it, you want it really, really black and dark in there so it just looks like there's a deepness. Deepness and mystery. So a few layers and then start to press down really, really hard. And when you press it really hard, it starts to get shiny and you're burnishing it. And if you do that, if you are going to print this off and do it at home, just do all of your, all of that square with the black. And when you think it's black, press harder again and go over again and it'll get blacker and blacker. You'll be surprised at how many times you can go over it again and again and you'll notice it getting blacker and blacker. So that's that little bit. I should move it over a little bit. Do you use that pencil a lot by any chance? Yes, Sarah. Um, Faber-Cassell polychromos are my main pencil that I use and I sometimes add in a little bit of the Prisma colour but predominantly um, Faber-Cassell polychromos are what I use. Um, I'm going to add a little bit more inside this heart even though I've got this little... In fact, I'm going to take my gem off just now and I'm going to add it at the very end. So you can see there's a lot more colouring to do there. But what I want to do is do a little bit of the background and finish off going round the corners. I bring in the original. Can you start, are you starting to see how it's building up and how you get getting it to look similar? Obviously I'm using different paper um, this time. So I'm going to use a little bit of cream up here in this corner on the outside so nice and light how much time have we got we're all right so nice light circular motions and obviously it looks better once you've got your girl all colored and i do have some things on youtube i do have some things on my own facebook group i'm a dash of d just in case you don't follow me on facebook or instagram um I do have some videos on YouTube where I show you how to do the skin and things and I do have a subscription area on my website where I really go into lots of detail showing you how to do eyes and um, faces and hair and drawing different bodies and things just in case anybody's wondering. So I've done a little bit of cream here and I'm going to bring in some orange so I'm going to start off with a, a lighter sort of orange like a cadmium orange and then just around the outside of the butterfly just going around the edges and keep the inside bit still lighter and then just edging that top bit and I'll go over that with a wee bit more because of the red in here I want to bring in a little bit of red so I'm now, well it's a kind of light cadmium red that I've got I'm going along the top. So if you just put your pencil along the edges, you can really edge the paper. And if you wanted to, you can go in onto that rice paper and add a little bit more of the orange as well. Or if you wanted to instead, you could bring in some more rice paper and just edge it along the top so that it's going over the top and then onto, which is what I'm going to do over at this side. Keeping it, keeping it light, but then once you, you're happy with what you've got, you've got a few layers on there, you can then burnish it a little bit. So I'm just going to bring in a bit more of the lighter orange and highlight this sort of area where these little antennas are. I'm going to get my fine liner again as well. And then I'm going to do a little bit more detail around the 
his wings. So just coming in and doing some little lines over the top of the lines that I've already done with the pencil. I'm going to come down the side of his body a little bit just to get, if you just do a little bit, then you get that shine. Hopefully you can see that. I'm just going to get my scissors because there's a tiny wee fragment there that's just getting in my way a little bit. Obviously, my scissors are not great, are they? <laughs> and again, with a fine liner, I'm going to highlight this area here. And then just bring in a few little lines up at the top there. I'm going to go over those little lines that I did earlier, just in little bits at the corner. And then I'm going to come around this little bit that I did with the rice paper. And just emphasize the bottom of his wing there and then here little lines coming in so his under his wing probably needs a little bit more of a shadow going on in there so just a few more layers to darken that up a little bit and in there and then with a the darker sort of blue this is like a bluish turquoise again coming in again and then just highlighting and darkening up a little bit more of the wing now i'm going to come over to this corner now it's slowly slowly <laughs> I'm going to add some rice paper over the top here as well. So I'm just going to stick this bit down so that it's going into the rice paper over there to make that blend in a bit. And then I'm going to find, if I can, a little bit of paper that looks a bit more like a border. If I've got anything. Let me just see. So I've got one here. Do you see how it looks like a little bit of a border? I'm going to stick it on the top there. The good thing with rice paper is you can just keep layering it up and adding more. And if you're not happy with it, just find a different piece and put it over the top. So there, that kind of gives that a little bit of a border. So there's some behind, which is going to stick up. Same here, all this here is going to be coming up. And eventually, we're going to put it on another backing sheet on a bit of hardboard. So when it's on there, you can then stick it down and then have these bits sticking up. Yeah, I'll just put this back into my heart. Right, I want to just colour this little bit and get a little bit more of it done. So I'm going back in again with my light creamy colour. Now you can go in onto your rice paper and go over the top of it and then that makes it look like it's all cohesive as well. And if you have stamps and I use um, Distressed Oxide as well with my stamps. You can start adding those in as well. I'm going to put another little bit of rice paper down the side here. I think maybe, I just want something really, really thin. What would I use? Just a little bit of this one maybe. I'll just tear it. I think it just needs something here as well. So I'm going to do it on the top. So this one's going on the top rather than underneath. And then go back to my cream. Put a little bit over the top. It's hard for me to be just doing on the background. I always start with eyes. The eyes are the, where I always start with all my artwork. If 
because that's where I get the emotion to come in and it's how I can express myself as well. So it feels a bit like soulless at the minute, doesn't it? I'll bring her back in just to keep reminding you of what we're aiming for. <laughs> And so again, back to the orange. So the colors that we're using up here, start to bring in down here as well. And if you've got colors in your rice paper that you like, I'm bringing, putting some orange in there on top of that, um, then bring those in. So there's definitely reds and things that you can start adding in. So I always go around the edges of my pages to edge them off. And I might even go over that again with a more of a um, a browny sort of tone. Let me just grab a brown. This is one of my favourites, Burnt Sienna. I use it a lot and it's nice if you have that in the hair as well and really build up a shine in the hair. And because there's a bit of that kind of colour in the rice paper, I think it's going to work. So I'm just going to edge my paper. And then you can bring in little squiggles as well. You can create little cracks or I'm going to go over this side as well with it. And so going down the edge and then slowly coming in and just creating a little, like a little, um, I don't know what you would call it, <laughs> but if you do that all the way around, then it starts to look a bit more um, vintagey, I think is the word, vintage and old. And it's just in line with what some of this paper is that I've used, because it's got little browns in there as well. So I kind of like to take with, as I'm building up the things I'm using, I try to bring those colors in, try and mix and match it with my pencils. And then that helps finish it off. I hope that makes sense. So can you see that that color there is in here on this little bit of paper? So it's quite nice to bring it in. And I just do little squiggles and things that start to appear and I like to use I always like to use hearts or buttons or things with my stamps I've got some little stamps somewhere but I don't know where I put them there they are so I've got these little the, I've had these for like ever <laughs> and I've got and distress oxide antique linen so I'm just going to put my heart in there and then perhaps just put a little heart there and then I'm going to continue to build up with my pencils I put some yellow in on there and press hard. Right, so I'm going to bring in some orange now. The cadmium orange. I'm just wondering, we're all right, we've still got 10 minutes. Um, and start to bring this into the background as well. So just keeping it light and then just finding little areas. So. I'm going to bring it that it's kind of coming around this heart a little bit and then coming over to where we've been bringing that burnt sienna in and blend that in over the top so if you go over the top of the burnt sienna with the orange you really vi make it vibrant is there anybody i'm going to buy it so i can practice oh thank you samantha that's really kind of you it is on my website and once you've got it, you can print it off as often as you like. Once you've downloaded it, you've got two A6 sizes. So this is the A6 size, plus you've got the A5, which is a nice big juicy one. 
if you enjoy doing it you can then do that one here you've got it in a black outline in case you prefer the stamped look and you've also got it in this pale outline so that you can really the reason i do it pale is because you can go over the top with your normal pencil as well so um, just your HB pencil and you can draw in your eyes and you can change things. You can make her hair long if you wanted. You could, this line stops here. So if you wanted to then bring it in and create a long hairstyle or have it coming out wild or keeping it short, I just, it just kind of gives you a little bit more room to play around with. So if you think you want her neck a bit fatter, you can then do that with your pencil and then use your pencils to then blend it in. I'll rub that away now, but... But yeah, if, you've, if you're familiar with me and you do my other Facebook Lives, you might be happy doing your own faces and your eyes and things, but if you have a look, you will see some of my um, work on YouTube or on my Facebook to help you to do your face. But I think and after this, Tomorrow I'm going to record a doing the face and I'll put it on YouTube just to help anybody that wants to do that. So if you wanted to bring in another heart and maybe bring it in down here, um, I'm going to put a little bit of, I'm doing it really fast. This isn't how I would advise doing it. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to show you. So we've got our little base, again, like I've mentioned with the base colour in the heart, if you always have a base colour, wherever you're doing it, then you'll have more control and you'll be able to um, build it up better. So I'm going to give this a little, a little line coming in to make it a little bit like a crack and then another one coming down here. And then go back with my yellow or my cream, go over the top of it, build it up. Start to use some of the paper. So the shape that's in this paper is a good way. So there's the line. So then to start building that up and create a similar shape with your pencils, if that makes sense. So you're using what you've got to try and build, build it up. So again, coming from here, building up the line. And then taking inspiration from what paper she's using, there's little blotches in there. You could perhaps bring in some blotches. So if we start off with the lightest colour first, just create a little bit of a circle. And then darken up a little bit around the outside and you could do that all the way through you're sort of like am i making sense <laughs> what time are we on 53 so i just want to darken up a little bit of this heart i'm just feeling like it still needs work in there so just with the pale geranium like if you keep it on the outside and then slowly build it in it's just a nice bit of time out isn't it just to just to make something but get lost in it for a little while. So yeah, just lots and lots of nice layers in there. Building it up. I could spend a while just doing the heart. So there's little bits of red in here. So, you know, I would I would also bring in maybe some little blotches of red every now and again, and maybe bring some of the red in on the side. 
maybe bring a little bit of red in over here, just start to bring it all together. Yes, I need to practice, practice, practice. <laughs> That's all it is really, Samantha, it's just practice. Once, um, every time you sit down with a pencil, you learn something more about what they can do and you get to know what you enjoy. It's about what you enjoy. I'm not really bothered about what the rules and regulations are with different art supplies. <laughs> I tend to just think, well, I'm just going to do what I feel like I want to do with it. It might even be nicer if I made that heart red now. And even though I've used the distressed oxide, I would happily go over the top of that with my pencils to try and change it and adapt it as you feel your artwork's growing. Because the way you first start off, you think, I'm going to do this, but then you get a feeling that something else might look better. So um, I think that that's about as much as what I can do today. I'll bring back in the original. Um, you can see that it's starting to build up. So yeah, I would put the little gems on as well. Put one in our heart and I did put some on the edges as well. So down here I put one, whoops, I put one in down here on the corner. I put another one in up here on the top and another one down here at the bottom just to finish, finish it off. But there, that's what you're aiming for everybody and I'll do, I'll do a I'll do a YouTube video to show you how to colour her face and her hair and her body. But hopefully you've enjoyed it. Thank you for coming to spend an hour with me. It's been really, really nice. I'll see you in March. And if you do want to follow me on my social media, I am on Instagram and on Facebook and Pinterest as well, if you do have a Pinterest boards. But anyway, I'll turn it around. Um to say goodbye. <laughs> um, does anybody get any questions? Thank you, Patty. Happy that you enjoyed it. And Carol, you loved her hair. Yeah, I'll show you how to get a little shine, how to get the shine on there. And um, of course, you, if you have the pale outline, you can give her long hair or whatever, you know, change it. Um, you're welcome, Mag. Thank you for stopping by for the hour. Um, it's been really nice to have an hour with you all. But I'm going to go now and have a little cup of tea. And I might even finish that heart off. <laughs> Thanks, Louise. Oh, it was nice that you were with me today, Louise. Thank you for joining me. Bye, everybody. See you soon. Bye.